Olá, estamos novamente com você. Hello, we are once again with you to speak of that which we received, which is the spirit of love. And the spirit of love makes you to have the intelligent faith in practice, in the life, which is the most perfect thing God created, the comparison which he made with marriage and the church of the Lord Jesus. A very good day. May God bless you all and making each and every one of you a fountain because this is the will of God for your life. God does not want to only give you a blessing or another blessing or two blessings or three blessings or hundreds of blessings. No, that's not what he wants. He wants you to be a blessing. Can you understand this? He wants you to be a blessing. So, in order for us to be a blessing here on earth, it's as was in the beginning, in the creation. God, firstly, created the heavens, the earth. He made all the creation and nature here on earth. And after he created it all, all was ready, ready for the bridal shower or the baby shower. So then what happens? He formed men in his image, in his likeness. And out of men came woman. So male and female he created so that through the two he would populate the earth and develop, manage it, but all in communion with God. So first he created marriage. He created the human being and marriage. He instituted marriage because he knew that it was not good for men to be alone. So, if it was not good for men to be alone, if a woman was created before, he would say it's not good for a woman to be alone. So, in reality, he didn't want either or to be alone, neither man nor woman. So, he created one for the other and marriage was instituted. Through marriage, God would be fulfilled through that union because both would become one flesh, one flesh. Just as we should be one with him. So, marriage is nothing more than a kind of relationship with God. The, the relationship between husband and wife needs to typify, symbolize marriage, union, the covenant between a human being and God. So, for example, in other words, when the two of us got married, before, rather, I was one body, you were another, but after getting married, we became one body. For example, it says we were speaking. It's not possible for people to see me without you, nor see you without me. We are really one, just one. And it's been 49 years in which we live in this union. And God wants to be glorified in our lives, in our communion, in this unity of ours. He wants us to be one with Him, one with Him. Do you believe in this? So, when you are one with the Lord, 
you become a blessing, you become a fountain. Wonderful, isn't it? It's all perfect. God does nothing imperfectly or small. He only does great things, majestic, great, glorious. And in order for us to populate this new, this new earth, he needed the couple from them to proceed from what he had created. So this couple showing how would they would behave or treat one another. It's exactly what he wanted us to also deal, to behave with him. Making sacrifices, pleasing, doing his will as a couple does. One does the will of the other. So he gave a classic example. He made a classic example of a couple and the future which he would truly he who would truly know this God would also have the same relationship, the same will to please, to sacrifice for this love. It's like this, for example, Jesus said, God is spirit. God is spirit. God is one. God is spirit. So, since God in the creation, he instituted, he materialized the unity, he materialized the union, the covenant through us, through marriage, husband and wife, wife and husband. So the two, as they are united, both become one body, one body. If you are injured, I'm injured. If I'm injured, you're injured. But in order for this unity in marriage to exist, it's obvious that there is a need for sacrifice, one sacrificing for the other, one sacrificing for the other. It's not the husband stepping on or subjecting his wife or making her to submit according to how he wants. No. But the husband needs to fulfill his role of leadership, leadership. And in order for the husband to lead his body, who is his wife, he needs to sacrifice because he's the leader. The leader goes ahead. He faces the lions. The leader needs to be the first in order to prepare the way for his body. The head needs to see, needs to think, needs to reason in order to take action. And the body goes after. And the other hand, on the other hand, she supports, she sacrifices herself, giving support to that leadership, assisting. This is why God said, I will make you a helper. And God is likewise. Here on earth, we are cooperators with God. Paul speaks about this, which means a human being, God was God made them in order to assist, to assist them here on earth. So when we become one body, we live in harmony, in order, in discipline, in righteousness, uprightness. So we are not more, not less than typifying, symbolizing that which God, the Spirit who is God, the Spirit of God, wants to fulfill, to realize you on earth through His servants. So this is so wonderful. It's powerful. This is why there is no way for one to be happy in this world without marriage. There is no way. It's impossible. It is impossible for a person to be happy on his own. And it's of no use, no use to try to substitute 
one woman for another or the man for another man, it's of no use. It needs to be male with female. Look what God speaks about marriage, the holiness of marriage. They asked Jesus, they asked him, the Pharisee asked him, is it okay which, for a man, which means to abandon, to leave his wife for any reason? That's, that was his question. So Jesus answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh? Which means see that when a man leaves his father and mother to get married. The first thing it does to leave father and mother to get married. And one flesh, which means you can't divide the two, you can't separate the two. How can you separate one flesh? What's interesting here, which we observe, is that Jesus made sure to say, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. He could simply say, a man will be joined to his wife and the two shall be one flesh. But he made sure to leave it clear, to make it clear, which means when a man, a young man or a lady, young lady leaves his house or her house, it's to be joined to his spouse or her spouse. So this is interesting, so important for us to notice that this is the harmony, this is what's right, what's correct, what is just. This is how it was with Christiani and with Viviani. This is exactly what happened when Viviani and Christiani got married. They went to be joined to their respective husbands and became one flesh. So then Jesus concludes, so then they are no longer two. They are no longer two people, but one flesh which means this is why the relationship, the marital and sexual relationship is exactly the baptism of this one flesh, of this marriage, so the two become one flesh, one within the other, forever. So this union, this holiness is what makes God to be fulfilled in our lives. The Holy Spirit is fulfilled in us. And he concludes, therefore, what God has joined, God has joined here. What God has joined together, let not man separate. Of course, today, after sin, God, God no longer joins the man with the woman. Usually, it's the devil. But when we receive the Holy Spirit, then comes the action of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit conducts us. He leads us to be guided to marriage between one and the other. So God blesses that union because there is the spirit of love. One can make the other happy and vice versa because they have the spirit of faith, which means the person is not led by emotions, but led, moved by the intelligent faith. It's the spirit. For example, when the spirit comes upon a man and a woman, the Holy Spirit makes them to become one body, one body, one flesh. And this flesh becomes a fountain 
because the spirit is no longer in two but in one. And this marriage, this single flesh is the fountain which generates other lives. Then come the children, the children are a fruit of the olive tree, not the vine, but the olive, who is the Holy Spirit. This is wonderful. Very well, my friends, pay attention. We are speaking about marriage. Marriage is a unity. Marriage is a commitment. It is a word said, a vow, a covenant, one to the other, one to the other. So this word given needs to be honored because the vowing of a word honored also represents and you can even demand from God the fulfillment of his word because God promised and because he promised so then he has the obligation because he's God he has the honor of being the most high he cannot fail with his word so it's marriage partnership which is done with him through faith Jacob was alone in the desert so he laid his head against a stone that stone represents represented Jesus and when he lay his head on that stone he had a dream he saw a stairway a staircase and God there at the top angels ascending and descending and when he woke up from that dream he poured the olive oil he had over that stone and made a vow with God he made an oath with God he said, if you are with me in this journey, which I'm embarking on, I'm alone, I have nothing, I have no family, I have no one to help me, I'm alone, I'm living in a desert, I'm poor, I have nothing, nothing, nothing. But if you are with me in this journey, you give me bread to eat, clothing, to where then you shall be my God. And of all that I receive, everything I gain, I'll give you a tenth, a tithe, which means of everything I gain, I receive, I'll give you the first fruits of my work, the first fruits of my, my challenge, of my life. And when he made this vow, poured the oil on the stone, so then the marriage with God was sealed which is what exactly what happens on the altar. The word of one and the other fulfills. All is the oath, the giving of the word, one to, a, to the other. My friends, this is what we shall have this Sunday at all universal church of the kingdom of God. You will give your word, giving your honor, it doesn't matter if you are a sinner or a saint. It doesn't matter. What matters is to get, make, take action towards God, to commit with Him. When I married you, Esther, and you married me, when we got married, we had our flaws. We had our mistakes. We had our differences, but when we made a vow with one another and we honored this vow on the altar, then the Spirit came and uni unified us for the rest of our lives, for all of our life here on earth. So we are testimonies or rather witnesses that the oath, the oath of the word and practicing it, the word honored in this oath 
will make a difference. And this is what we will do tomorrow when you come. For example, you're unemployed, you have no money, you have nothing. You have nothing to lose. Neither did Jacob have anything to lose. He was in the middle of the desert alone. But from that day onwards, he was no longer alone. When he made a pact with God, a vow with God, and he honored this vow, that's it. That's it. That disgrace was over. Usually, nowadays, ladies and guys, they want to get married. I want to get married to be happy, which means they're thinking about themselves. But Jacob thought, I want a family. I want a family, which means I want a home. I want a place of harmony in which I will be leading this house in harmony, which means God honors and quenches the thirst and hunger of those who thirst and hunger for justice, for righteousness. Isn't this wonderful? So, friends, if you're going to get married to someone who wants to be happy, so this person has been unhappy, and that's not good, you will be unhappy with him with him or with her. If you want to get married to be happy, it's because you're unhappy. You are unhappy. How do you want to be happy getting married to someone else? First, you need to marry God. First, you need to ally yourself with him. This is what Jacob did. He formed a partnership with God and everything in his life prospered. Marriage, he had challenges, he had problems. But he had his wives, he had money, he was rich, he had children, etc., etc. But first, he formed a partnership with God. And this is what we shall have tomorrow, this Sunday at all Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. It is the partnership with God, the marriage with God, partnership with God. You will surrender to give in. You will make a vow of surrender to the Lord so that He may fulfill His word as well in your life. And this partner has what it takes to give you everything you dream for, everything you plan, as long as you obey Him. You make this pact with Him, this alliance with Him. He has what it takes to fulfill infinitely a lot more than you think or can fathom in your life. It's what the Word of God says. God is prepared to do more than what you want in your life. Infinitely more. And we can speak about this, isn't it? Because He has been like this with us. So friends, tomorrow, come ready, come prepared for this commitment with God. For example, if tonight or last night you had a dream or not, it doesn't matter, but tomorrow, plan to be with God on the altar, forming a partnership with Him tomorrow.